Hi, this is Dr. Timothy A. Hovannis, founder and president of Dr. Tim's Aquatics. In this video, I'm going to talk about biodegradable polymers for removing nitrate and phosphate from the aquarium, both the theory and the operation. First, we have to talk a little bit about terminology. This is being called probiotic in the reef keeping hobby, and this is incorrect. Probiotics are defined as living microorganisms which, when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit to the host. Removing nitrate and phosphate from water with bacteria is not probiotic. That's like saying nitrification, where you remove nitrite and ammonia with bacteria from water, is probiotic, and that's clearly not the case. So what is a biopolymer? First, we need to explain what a polymer is. A polymer is a long chain of a repeating chemical that has a carbon backbone. The mirror is the single unit, which you can see in the oval. Poly just means many, so a biopolymer is basically many mers that repeat. Mostly these are petroleum-based, like ethylene or polyethylene, but they can also now be bio-based, where the carbon comes from an organic substance such as corn or starches, which we'll talk about. So a biopolymer is carbon-forming backbone that is organic. It's marketed as a new technology, but it's really been around since the late 1990s. And for water treatment, it can be used two ways, aerobically or anaerobically. There's not a lot of comparative studies about it, but as you'll see, we can take a little data and talk about how we can use this in aquariums. So general view of the biopolymers, here's a few. Basically, the little pellets or pearls that typically would be put into a machine and melted and then an injection molding machine turned into knives or forks or spoons. But for us, it's perfect because we can put these in a reactor and fluidize them and get the bacteria to grow right onto the biopolymer. Now, what's the source of the biopolymer? Well, as I said earlier, they're normally used to make biodegradable plastics. They're not expressly made for aquaria. Manufacturers such as TELUS, Bayer, Monsanto, all these large manufacturers make them from a variety of substances, which is on the table on the right. Degradable polymers include polyhydroxyl alkanates or PHAs. These are made by microorganisms. A very common one is made from glucose, corn sugar, but they can be made from molasses or whey. Polycaptolactones, PCLs, are synthetic. They're not made by bacteria. There's polylactosides made from corn or tapioca, and the polyhydroxyl butyrates, which can be made from starch like genetically modified potatoes. Now, why do we want to use biopolymers? In a nutshell, biopolymers are used to convert nitrate and phosphate into bacterial cells, which are then exported from the aquarium, reducing the nitrate and phosphate in the aquarium. It's done in an aerobic condition, and it's an alternative to liquid carbon dosing. It, th using biopolymers is sometimes called solid vodka dosing, it's easier because you don't need to make manual adjustments or automatic additions of the liquid carbon. Where's phosphate in all this? Well, to grow bacteria cells, you need carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and some trace elements. There's a very general incorporation ratio of 50 carbon, 10 nitrogen, and 1 phosphorus into the bacterial cell. And the idea is to use the biopolymer as a source of carbon to grow bacteria, and the bacteria grow, they remove the nitrate and the phosphate from the aquarium. The standard operating method is, as I mentioned, have carbon, nitrate, and phosphate produce bacterial biomass. The polymer is both the carbon source, so you don't have to have any external carbon added to your aquarium, and the media structure for the bacteria to grow on. It's done in an aerobic environment. The bacteria, while not studied to the genus species level, are probably bacillus. Now here's what the polymers look like in operation. We have a reactor with water entering the bottom of the reactor. The water keeps the pearls or the polymer 
fluidized. This is very important. You don't want it to go anaerobic. As the water passes over these beads, the bacteria will start to grow on the beads. It is their structure. And the bacteria will also consume the beads as they grow. And as they grow, once again, they're going to remove nitrate and phosphate from your system. It's important to have a protein skimmer because the bacterial cells are going to come out of your reactor and you want to trap them and remove them, either with a protein skimmer or a good mechanical filter. Potential problems with biodegradable polymers. Well, there's reported problems of sudden death of corals. It removes too much phosphate, removes the phosphate too fast. The process gets stuck with low phosphate, but the nitrate is present produces too much bacterial biomass, clogs partially producing nitrite, or clogs fully producing hydrogen sulfide. And there's explanations for some of these problems, but not all of them. The most common reported problem is the process gets stuck or stops. But this is kind of natural because, as I mentioned before, you need carbon, nitrate, and phosphate. If one of those substances runs out, the process is going to stop because the bacteria won't be able to grow. Typically, phosphate will be depleted first, leaving nitrate at measurable levels. There's also a question about do they remove the nitrate and phosphate to low enough levels, but nobody knows what low enough is. A recent study in Advanced Aquarist Magazine, the March 2011 issue, asked the questions, is carbon limited in an aquarium and are bacterial numbers low in an aquarium compared to the wild? Because if carbon's not limited and there's lots of bacteria in an aquarium, why do we need biodegradable polymers in the first place? The study conclusions were that bacteria are definitely lower in tanks with active uh, protein skimming compared to natural reefs. And mechanical filtration in the form of skimming, but not carbon, did result in l fewer bacteria in the system, but not all bacteria could be skimmed. Also, bacteria growth did appear to be carbon limited in the aquarium water, which is very important. So now how do we use the biodegradable polymers? You need a reactor to put the polymer in. You don't want to mix the polymer with carbon or GFO. You need to keep it moving. Start with one-third of the final dose and work up to the full dose over a month or so. And realize it can take three or four weeks for the bacteria to colonize the polymer. The polymer will be slowly consumed, so you're going to need to replenish it periodically. Don't wait till it completely runs out. The polymer should last six to nine months, but that depends on your tank conditions. You need a good skimmer or mechanical filter to remove the bacterial biomass. And finally, if the polymer does go anaerobic, it's clogged up, it turns black, you need to shut it down, get the reactor off the system, and clean it up. Now, in conclusion, biodegradable polymers offer another choice for managing nitrate and phosphate in your aquarium. But they are a tool. They can be abused, they can be misused, and they don't make up for poor husbandry. Understanding how to use polymers and what they can do for your system can be important, but they're not going to cure your bad habits. Appreciate your time. Have any questions, please contact us at info at drtimsaquatics.com. And until next time, good fish keeping.